estuvimos en Twitter con 2011 con la cobertura de vídeos y después de haber comido, bebido algo, ido al baño, etcétera, nos encontramos con Richard Choi, que es de la empresa Genius Software, que ustedes conocen bastante bien. Uh, Richard, welcome to Telesemana. Thank you very much. So Richard, tell us what uh, Genius Software is uh, showing here, where you guys trying to communicate with the operators, with the audience, what, what's the message? Okay, um, well at, at Futurecom this year we're talking very much about the latest trends that we're seeing with our customers around the world. Mm -hmm. uh, we're fortunate in that we have customers deployed in over 70 sites across the world, so we're right across South and Central America, North America, Europe, Asia, uh, Africa, Middle East, so there's a lot of trends that we've been coming across. So. And a lot of those trends have resulted in us innovating with our, our, our core portfolios of messaging, call completion, mobile advertising, and, and other mobile services. So we've been talking uh, and introducing our customers to, to the new things that we're doing in the area of um, voice over IP for mobile, okay. uh, in the areas of mobile advertising, mobile financial services, um, rapid service creation in general, which is a very important area for a lot of our customers, um, and uh, and the convergence of social media and uh, internet content in general with the, the mobile space. Okay. Now, you were saying that uh, you've been gathering information about what the users are doing in different areas of the, of the mm -hmm. world. Yeah. Have you found any consistencies throughout the world, or are you seeing uh, a fragmented world in terms of the mobile experience and 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 thus adapting your your system so you know it okay. can be adapted to the Latin yeah. American variety or the Asian variety or the European variety. I think or the this, African. No, I think there's definitely some conformity and uniformity in how people are using devices. I mean, the markets that differ are the likes of Asia and Africa, where the growth in terms of subscriber penetration is much higher. Okay. They're big markets, right? You know, and uh, like you talk about India, you talk about China, Indonesia, yeah. they're enormous. And in Africa, the, you know, the actual mobile penetration is quite low. So there's big, big growth there. But in terms of the way people are using phones, there's a lot of uniformity. Okay. Um, you know, mobile broadband, broadband phones, data is big, okay? It's growing everywhere. Um, but at the same time, you still have a, a very, very large portion of the population that are still using smartphones, regular old phones, and they all want the same thing. They want to be able to talk as cheaply as possible, send messages as cheaply as possible, and do more and more things, more interesting things as, as on their mobile phone, right? Whether it's smart or not. So. Well, actually, now that you mentioned this, um, it just occurred to me, we were talking before before you came into the interview, you said, what are you going to talk about? And I said, you know, your company, and you said, well, religion or something like that, right? <laughs> uh, no, and what I'm thinking is that uh, we've been pro trying to prove that uh, all men are made equal. Right. And obviously, the mobile phone could be a proof of that, because uh, as you're saying, we're finding an uniformity in how we use it. Right. So that would prove that, uh, but it's just a crazy thing. <laughs> <I'm having. laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. Empirically, we can yeah. really prove that we are all equal. Yeah, I don't know if you could, it depends on how you define equality, right? Okay. Equality in terms of uh, the value that every human being is the same. Yeah, I, mean, I we, think we're born in different places, but, yeah, but at the end of the day, we're searching for the same things. Okay? Yeah, and, and you know, part of human happiness is communicating, being able to communicate as well as possible at the best value as possible. So that's what all of our our customers, mobile operators, are trying to provide to their to their subscribers. Okay. And I think we see that all over the world. So. Okay, well, we're just gonna leave this crazy talk. Yes. Um, <laughs> human rights and, and so on and yeah. racism. Yeah. And uh, let's go for for gene software. Okay. So usually companies take the opportunity of these shows to announce something. Are you announcing anything here? Have you been announcing anything recently? Not just in Latin America, but anywhere? Well, we, we have something. Okay. Well, we, we haven't announced um, anything major in particular here at Futurecom. A lot of what we do as a company is compound growth year on year. So it's steady growth. So it's a gradual evolution of what we do, a gradual evolution of the services that we offer to our customers. And um, so, you know, it's, it's a sort of steady growth. So we don't make lots of big bang announcements. Um, just, just keep going with we your just clients. Absolutely. And we're growing year on year. And we're bringing new things to our clients year on year. Um, and our penetration here in in, in South and Central America, it, it, it grows year on year, and we don't make big noise about it, but um, if we take, for example, customers like uh, Nextel Group, you know, each year we add a bigger footprint in each of their operators into more of their operating companies. Uh, the same you could say with cable and wireless, and, uh, you know, we're gradually increasing our presence here in South and Central America. Now, in terms of the business that uh, Latin America brings to the overall organization of Gini, yeah. how percentage are we talking about here? Um, South and Central America is around about 
20% of the other that's companies. That's pretty high. Yeah. Compared to other companies that we're seeing here and yeah. discussing the same figures. Yeah. What do you expect for the future in terms of, of Latin America, given the fact that it seems that Latin America is a bit immune to the uh, economic crisis that we're seeing some, somewhere else, like the U.S. and, and Europe? Also. Well, I think that uh, you know Latin America sh may maintain that sort of level uh, part of our business, but uh, it may actually decrease mainly because of significant growth in other markets. I see. So if you look at Africa and Asia, the growth there is significant, right? So the potential the, the potential revenue potential for us, the potential revenue potential for our customers is much, much higher. And growth forecasts for South and Central America are much flatter. You know, so that being said, I expect us to expand our presence here. I expect our customers to grow. Um, but whether it will, whether it, there's a, there's enough potential there to kick uh, South and Central America to over 20% of our of our, our revenues, I'm, I'm not so sure. Should you probably on the top of, of what you think you can you can expect from? Well, no, I think we can do more. But as I said, you know, you other know, parts of the company are growing. So when you're actually making you're competing, yes, yeah. we're competing with other parts. Not so much competing, but no. as the other parts of the company grow, then the percentage. Um, the actual percentage of the business which belongs to South and Central America decreases because of the other regions. Okay, T tell me about more advertising to finalize this interview yeah, because sure. it's, it's one of those services that we hear a lot uh, mm -hmm. in terms of you know operators need to do this. Yeah, and it seems that we don't see a major uh, service out there that you would say okay, like we, you know we saw the bleak. Uh, yeah. trial in, in, in Europe uh, yeah. trying to be just a, an advertising company tied yeah. to a mobile operator. Yeah. What's happening with mobile advertising? Well, I think there was a lot of hype about three or four years ago. People started talking about mobile advertising and Gini Software invested significantly into this area. And we worked with a number of our customers and, and we have deployments in the Middle East, Africa and Asia. Um, and we will soon have an operator here in Brazil who will be doing mobile advertising live as well. The platform is deployed, they're about to launch the service. Now, I think what actually happened is there's a lot of hype and a lot of operators looked at the business area and they realized that you know, advertising is an end-to-end -end business. There's a lot of stuff that they don't understand, which is, you know, how do you sell advertising? How do you capture the imagination of the brands? And, and how do you, you know, how do you target advertising on your network? So the whole business model, the whole business and process of advertising was new for mobile operators. But it was quite clear that mobile operators have a marketing nirvana. They have exactly. a direct line to the audience. And it's just a matter of how you execute on that um, and uh, you know who you get to execute on it. So it's taken some time for operators to get a handle on that. And the majority of our customers and operators that we're working with today in advertising, they're doing it in partnership with us and in partnership with other companies such as agencies, such as media agencies, digital media agencies who understand. It's finding partners, it's a key. Exactly. So they, they, those digital media partners know how to position the opportunity for the major brands, for the advertisers, okay? And they understand how to uh, how to take a message digitally onto a, onto a mobile operator's network. So they understand, you know, how they should profile subscribers, whether they should be um, uh, looking at advertising over SMS or over MMS or over USSD or whether it's over, you know, browsing headers, whether it's WAP or HTML. It depends on what's the product, what's, you know, what's the service that's been promoted, what's the target subscriber base and stuff like that. So there's a knowledge there specifically that the operators have figured out they need to work with someone to do that. Okay. And Gene is one of those companies? Yes, indeed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, Richard, thank you so much for visiting us. John, you're very welcome. Pleasure you having me here. Okay. Thanks. Thank you.